Hello, my friends. So I got an interesting question about a week ago, and it was about the use of sildenafil, which is better known by its trade name Viagra, for the treatment of male pattern baldness. Now, sildenafil is one of the most famous and prescribed medications in the entire world. It is heavily advertised and usually prescribed for the treatment of erectile dysfunction. It is also sometimes prescribed to treat pulmonary arterial hypertension, as it has been shown to have a blood pressure lowering effect. It is also prescribed off-label to Jason Blaha, so it sticks out enough so he doesn't pee down his butt crack. The drugs have been on the market since at least 1997, so it is, as far as I know, the oldest oral FDA-approved treatment for erectile dysfunction. But as it turns out, interestingly enough, the drug has recently been researched as a possible therapy for treating male pattern baldness. So, I've decided to look into this and see if any of the research has led to any positive outcomes. So... <laughs> We know what Viagra, also known as sildenafil, is used to treat, but what is it exactly? Well, it is part of a classification of drugs known as PDE5 inhibitors. PDE5 inhibitors are otherwise known as phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors, of which the drugs Taldalafil and Vardenafil, better known as Cialis and Levitra, are also a part of. Now, by inhibiting the PDE5 enzyme, they work by causing the smooth muscles to relax, which in turn improve blood flow, most notably to the corpus cavernous, which is the shaft of the penis, but but it is also known to improve blood flow all over the body, which is why it's sometimes prescribed for hypertension. Now, I'm skeptical of the blood flow theory of hair loss, but drugs like sildenafil have multiple effects, and it could be effective for many reasons, not just blood flow. Impaired blood flow is not a direct cause of hair loss, and we know this because even bald men's scalp will bleed, like if you took a scalpel to it to it, for instance. Um, people with hypertension who have constricted blood vessels can still have full heads of hair, uh, so we know it's not just an issue of blood flow. I mean, if blood flow were really impaired enough in an individual head and scalp that the hair follicles weren't receiving a significant enough of supply, of uh, blood supply to stay alive, then the individual would have a much more immediate problem to worry about, you know, like a stroke. So, a study I found in 2018, which I'll link below, examines the effect of sildenafil on hair growth. The study is behind a paywall, so I've decided to shell out the cash so you guys wouldn't have to because you know I love you guys. So this is a very basic science study and very preliminary. It's also an in vitro study performed on human tissue, and the study also includes an in vivo study performed on mice. So... During the in vitro portion of the study, scalp tissue samples were extracted from human subjects. None of them had any history of scalp disease, so there were no mitigating factors that could have adversely affected the outcome of the study. The hair follicle cells and the dermal papillary cells, which are instrumental in hair growth, were cultured in a petri dish. The researcher were also able to measure the PDE5 levels as well as various growth factors in, in the cells, both with and without Viagra. For those who don't know what growth factors are, they are various hormones that stimulate cell growth and blood vessel growth, and they are active all over the human body. Uh, and one of the ways DHT, dehydrotestosterone, destroys the hair follicle is by inhibiting these growth factors, as well as destroying the dermal papilla cells. IGF-1 is the growth factor inhibited by DHT, and IGF-1 is known to regulate the growth cycle of the hair. So it is important to know, uh, it is important to look at IGF-1 and other growth factors, uh, which these researchers did in the study. In the in vivo rodent study, they applied two different topical solutions of Viagra. There was a 0.1% and 1% solution of Viagra, and they compared this to both a control group and a group using 2% minoxidil. Getting to the results of these studies, in the human hair cultures, it was found that the PDE5 enzyme is active in the human hair follicle. Now remember, PDE5 is the target enzyme for Viagra, so one would expect Viagra to have some effect on hair growth. In fact, after treatment with, with Viagra, it was found that the growth of the dermal papillary cells, in fact, increased. Now, the dermal papilla cells are the cells responsible for promoting hair growth, so the more of those you have, the better. So, so far, things are looking pretty promising with the study. They also found various growth factors in the dermal papilla cells increased as well, and this includes IGF-1, which is the growth factor that is decreased by dehydrotestosterone, DHT. So, what about the in vivo study with the rodents? So, a rodent isn't a human being, but it is a mammal, and it has real hair just like us. So so it would be a promising thing to see results, uh, specifically results as they relate to hair growth with Viagra in these rodents. And what they found specifically in the study, in both the 0.1% of Viagra and 1% Viagra group, it was that there was a transition from the telogen phase, which is the resting phase of the hair follicle, to the antigen phase, which is the growth phase. So simply put, what this means is that the growth phase of the hair follicle was prolonged and the resting phase was shortened, resulting in more overall hair growth in the rodents. What 
was also notable is that the effectiveness of Viagra doesn't seem to be very dose dependent because both the 0.1% solution of Viagra and 1% solution of Viagra promoted hair growth roughly on par with 2% minoxidil. And you know, 2% minoxidil is a pretty strong hair growth stimulant, so that's that's significant. Now, the final parameter that they looked at was angiogenesis, which is the growth of new blood vessels in the skin around the hair follicles. This is known as peripheral parafollicular vessel formation, and they didn't include the minoxidil group in this one, but it was shown that both groups treated with both topical Viagra uh, experienced significant angiogenesis compared to the control. In fact, the number of blood vessels doubled compared to control, which seems pretty impressive. So, Summarizing the results, it was shown that Viagra promotes hair growth by what appears to be the mechanism of angiogenesis caused by Viagra's effect on stimulating growth factors. Stimulating growth factors in the hair follicles and the dermal papilla cells would make it a growth stimulant uh, similar to something like minoxidil as opposed to an antiandrogen like finasteride, RU5841, or brizula. So many people look at the results of the study and they may come to the conclusion that improved blood flow is the reason why Viagra works and thus other measures that improve blood blood flow in the human organism, such as cardiovascular training, niacin supplementation, or the use of other blood pressure medications may also improve hair growth. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. The reason why it appears Viagra is beneficial for hair growth is not because of improved blood flow in general, but rather because of its ability to create new blood vessels specifically in the scalp to counteract the destructive effect of DHT, which does the opposite by decreasing IGF-1 and thus destroying the scalp blood vessels. Now, IGF-1 itself has been used to treat hair loss in individuals who have something called Laron syndrome, which is a congenital birth defect where people do not produce enough IGF-1, and in those people, supplementation of IGF-1 via injection has been shown to improve hair growth, but there is no evidence that IGF-1 used in healthy individuals promotes hair growth, and it's even been shown that having elevated IGF-1 levels can in fact cause hair loss. So it's complicated, and it's not recommended that people try to use IGF-1 to promote hair growth. So it is true that decreased blood flow to the hair follicles will result in their destruction, but the effect is localized. It is not systemic. It is fully possible for an individual to have superlative cardiovascular health and still be bald because they've lost the blood vessels in their scalp due to DHT. And improving your cardiac output isn't going to do anything to improve blood flow to the hair follicles because the blood vessels specifically in that region aren't there. They've been destroyed by the DHT. So you can kind of think of it like uh, a fire hose trying to put out a fire inside a burning building. The water, in theory, would help stop the fire, but if the windows are closed, the water will never reach the fire, no matter how strong the stream is. So, putting this into perspective, this is a basic science study, and more research is needed. Specifically, we need some more human studies to draw conclusions, but what research we do have shows quite a bit of promise. We know that minoxidil is the best hair growth stimulant on the market, but some people cannot use it due to allergies, and it also doesn't work for everyone, since certain individuals do not have sufficient amounts of the enzyme sulfutrans Transferase, which is what converts minoxidil into its active form, minoxidil sulfate. So for those people who don't have enough of that enzyme, putting minoxidil on their scalp would just be like putting water on their scalp and it would do, do nothing. And that's probably why some people report that they use uh, minoxidil and it doesn't do anything for them. Now, there are plenty of people who use Viagra who are bald or balding, but this study was done with topical Viagra, so perhaps if this could conveniently be compounded into a topical solution, some individuals could experiment with it and see if it works for themselves. I'd like to see more research on this done because we don't have many options as far as hair growth stimulants go. I mean, there are growth stimulants like stamoxidine and adenosine, but none of these work as well as minoxidil, and a lot of them are also very expensive. So this was a pretty recent study, so it does give me hope that there will be some follow-up studies done on the humans in the future, but in the meantime, I don't think we can rule out the possibility that Viagra could be utilized as a hair loss treatment for both men and women, in fact, due to its mechanism not being hormonal. We don't know if the topical form is absorbed systemically, so we don't know if getting a raging boner is a side effect, but having a raging boner isn't always a bad thing, so who cares? Now, anyways, if anyone wants to actually try this, if anyone plans on trying this, uh, maybe talk to a chemist to see if they can compound a topical solution similar to those used in the study. But of course, make sure you talk to your doctor first. So, all right, folks, I am out. Thank you for watching.